What's up, uh, Rubits? Little Big Robots here with a, another quick video. I was working on some other stuff in the background. So I'm um, rearranging my shelf as I always do. And I thought it'd be cool to uh, show you this cool, just a quick little video about some of my favorite toys from when I was a kid. These are two of my original uh, Starcom toys. Starcom were an 86. I had a coin attached. Uh, 1986, I believe toy line uh, made by Coleco and they were basically the US Space Force kind of and they had some really interesting play features like I said these are my original ones from 1986 the general idea with these guys um, is that um, um, they had kind of a transformation gimmick as everything did now when I turned you know like uh, 13, 12 or something like that. I discovered girls, of course. And so a lot of my old toys I either tore up or broke into pieces, which is really unfortunate. I had some really cool ones. I had the G.I. Joe Hovercraft. I wasn't even a G.I. Joe guy, but I had the Hovercraft. And I uh, set it in a pond and I shot it with a 22 with my friend until it sank. <laughs> uh, this one, for example, is missing the big rotor parts. I'll link in the description a, a page where you can see all the Starcom original toys. This is a common one, this toy here, where you get it, it's missing these like tread parts here. But generally the idea is you press a button and it transforms. So you're gonna see if it'll, it might run out of juice. Ah, there it goes. So it transforms, of course, dog hair everywhere. These things pop out typically. And that's the little defensive laser gun. It's got this cool cockpit. And what's funny about this one is, for some reason, I wanted to make it look... I had candles, a bunch of candles. And, you know, as a kid, fire as a young man or a woman, if you're into that, <laughs> in your tweens when you're in the 80s, was, was a blast because you could burn up your old toys or whatever. But I had this one, and I would uh, melt wax over stuff, and like I made a sealed one of my uh, figures. I put in like carbonite made of wax. You know, I sealed them in there. So this one, I actually poured wax all over it, like I was gonna seal it apart. You know, or, or uh, you know, like seal it up. And so you can still see some of it on there. So I've got to find a way to get all of it off of there. I think just some hot water, you know, would do it. I might take this apart anyway. I don't know if I'm gonna repair it and get the treads, but I might. But what was interesting about Starcom is they had this, what they call a Magnalock system. And so it had it was magnetized to have these cool little play, play features like that. And you would, this one is supposed to transform by hitting this. And then this is supposed to come out, I believe. But since I spray painted it when I was a kid, it's, it's kind of locked up. You can see the cockpit in there and everything like that. So it has its own kind of transformation, and then it carries this thing, and you can actually press this button here. I thought you could press this button here. Or is it this one here? One of these, and it kick, it basically it basically detaches this magnet from this original, um, uh, I guess you'd call it like a cargo box. What I really liked about this is I would use this with Space Marines and playing Warhammer back in the day. If it's marked B... That means it was my original toy, and I have a numbering system that I keep. And then you can open it, and it's a, it's still a good little piece. You know, you could if you had a few of these, you could paint them. Which side does it open on? There you go. And I've got two of the characters in here. The figures are really cool too. Pretty basic stuff, not not outrageously cool, but pretty cool. It had these little little play features like the helmet. Well, let's see if I can get the helmet to go back on there. I think that's right. The helmet would go up. And you'd have them, and then they have these magnets in the feet like that. Everything's real dirty; it's ancient, and they could stick to the to the magnetized parts, which I thought was a, was clever as a kid. But I remember not really knowing why they did that. Um, I have this one, and he's missing his visor. But again, pretty cool characters. Just five points, actually, a little more five than five points. Oh, is that six, seven? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. So the legs bend a little bit, but they're, but they're pretty detailed, pretty nice characters. Um, so what I have here in the bag is I was going to clean this guy up. I started to clean off the, the spray paint using a, an alcohol. If anybody out there knows a good way to kind of remove that, let me know. Um, and I decided I'm just going to go on eBay and spend 15, 20 bucks and get an original one. And hopefully this is the one that I ordered and it's not something else because the whole video is kind of pointless, isn't it? Let's, let me open it here. Let me get it, rip it open real quick. 
just in case there's any personal information. Let's pull out the toy. Yep, there it is. And this will show you the difference in the colors. Oh, this is really nice. Good job. Cool. Okay, so this is your same toy. And so you can see what I what I did to it. I, I covered it in spray paint, which gummed it up and everything. I don't know if this one will work even better, but it sh this should come forward. Huh? Huh? Let's see. Maybe it's not working. Okay, so that one doesn't come forward. This, I thought that this whole section came forward. Oops, I'm blurring it. Sorry. I'm pretty sure that's how it worked. The guns come out. I think that these flop down by their... Usually when they popped out, I thought they flopped down by themselves. Oh, there we go. Oh, you pushed that one to launch out before. I don't remember that. So that needs to come up. The legs are really cool. They're this, they have this cool, uh, like, see how they clack into place? They have this neat look to them. The back legs are kind of backwards. And it's called a sky crane. So I guess the idea here, the idea is that these pop up and it flies off. With the, with the cargo intact, you've got to pull them out a little bit. So you even widen the stance a bit. Put the cargo in there. And it flies off using these little two little... That's all they have <laughs> to carry. You know, there's no big... You'd expect a big wing or a jet engine or something like that. But you can see the difference there. So, you know, so that's what that part is for. Okay, so that's not working because it's all gummed up. So I might eventually get that. What I could do is probably take it apart and clean it up. There's probably just gummed up a little bit in there. Uh, but you can, that's basically what it does. So this closes. How would it close back? Let's close it back. Put that in there. The legs fold up. You know, really simply. I, I have such sense memory, like I've memorized this toy from just having it for so many years. This one here. And I still play with it. And it's still really solid. So Starcom's a really nicely made uh, line. And so you would go, you go pop for the, these, if it works. There you go. Oh, there you go. They both popped up. Good. And then the front one. See? And those do pop down. See? So see how those go? Watch the front ones there. See how the by you know the momentum carries us forward. And then your guy, of course, goes in here. I don't know what scale this would be. It's kind of an unusual scale. So they kind of hang out of it. Um, this one was really funny because I think the idea here is that this guy stands here, puts his arms out, and then you you attach his He's basically controlling the gun, like holding it. But what I find funny is he's controlling it from just standing back there in the open. He's not protected in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> but this cockpit I really like, actually, the little pop-up one. I think it's really cool. It reminds me of uh, Jason, the, uh, uh, Jace, Jason the Will Warriors. So I like that. Eventually I'd want to clean all this up, but I kind of like that. I like when toys have a used quality to them. Like this one is obviously used. It's not brand new. I think it was probably $15, $20 or whatever. But as you can see, if I take it apart and clean it up, it would definitely, it works now, but it would definitely work even, even smoother back then. So they had a whole line of it. It's a really cool little line. I'm trying to get that back in there. There we go. And I love this compact thing. Like this thing here is often missing with the sky crane, the yellow part. And I could see why. It's just a, you could see kids just losing that, no problem. But isn't that cool? I thought that was a, just a, a neat little kind of a. I wanted to show you some of my. These are some of the toys that I grew up on. I've been, I'm going to start making videos showing a lot of the toys that I grew up on, but also the ones that I, the original ones I still own. So, <clears throat> like this one will be marked with a B. This one will be marked with a B. This one will be marked with an L, as in Larry B. I don't know what the L stands for. What, what did the L stand for? Not bows or something? <laughs> so this will be LB and I have a number on it. So I'll know that although this is the same toy, this is the original one I own. This is not. And then I have a digital and physical catalog that I keep all it in. So pretty cool. Starcom's not bad at all. It's a really neat, uh, Just a, it's just an unusual, um, I don't know if you're looking for 1980s toys that have a lot of great play features, but have a sturdiness to them and kind of a reality to them. Because I want to say that these... Might have been created in conjunction with, like, NASA gave them some some advice on them or something like that. They're trying to make, like, a Space Force, which is really funny these days. But go check out Starcom. They're, they're actually really, really cool. So have a good one, everybody. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.